I listened to your podcast with Kurt Metzger, who who I know and I've been on his podcast, had a great time on his pod. He's a fun dude. He is. Uh, but I think I disagree with you both kind of on the Israel issue. Confronted with facts in a reasonable and logical way, Joe Rogan sort of went on a little seven or eight minute journey there and said, yeah, OK, those are all really good points. When last we saw scholar and journalist Coleman Hughes, he was at the table with the ladies of The View. You remember when Sonny Hostin was trying to teach him a lesson about what Martin Luther King really stood for and believed? Because after all, she knows Martin Luther King's daughter. Meanwhile, Coleman Hughes actually is a scholar, researched Martin Luther King and dared to put out a book that said, you know, if we really want to advance things in race relations in this country, maybe we should actually judge each other on the content of our character instead of the color of our skin. Yeah, you remember that guy. Well, that guy just sat down with Joe Rogan and Joe Rogan. Uh, Joe Rogan started with a conversation about uh, what's going on in Israel. And actually, this is coming on the heels of a podcast where Joe Rogan was comparing Israel's action in Gaza with Hamas, saying that they're on the brink of genocide. And Coleman Hughes, Coleman Hughes came ready for that conversation. And you need to see it, not just for what Coleman Hughes says, but pay close attention to how Joe Rogan takes this information, digests it, and what he does with it. I, I, I listened to your podcast with Kurt Metzger, who who I know and I've been on his podcast, had a great time on his pod. He's a fun dude. He is. Uh, but I think I disagree with you both kind of on the Israel issue, on the the idea. There was one point where you were kind of saying it's almost as if the Jews are doing what was done to them. Well, as if I'm, it's genocide. I'm saying that when you're killing 30,000 innocent civilians in response to something that killed 1,200 innocent civilians, and you're continuing to bomb an area into oblivion, mm. which is what it looks like mm. when you're looking at Gaza. There's many people that have made the argument that that is at least the steps of genocide or a form of genocide. You're, you're destroying thousands and thousands of people's homes and, and killing them. So when you say 30,000 civilians, it's not 30,000 civilians that have been killed, though. How many th thousands have been killed? So according to ha uh, Gaza Health Ministry, which mm -hmm. is, it is run by Hamas, the number they have is 32,000, but they don't distinguish between Hamas and civilians. How so, many members of Hamas are there? 40, 50, uh, 40,000, something like that. It's, I don't think the number is known, but it's tens of thousands. So ha Hamas says 32,000 people have been killed, mm -hmm. civilians and soldiers. Israel says 13,000 soldiers have been killed by Israel. So okay. if you just being, let's not doubt either number. They could both be well, inflated. But like, but but if the, both of those numbers are accurate, which they may or may not be, that would be thirteen thousand soldiers killed, nineteen thousand civilians killed. Mm -hmm. Which for urban combat in the Middle East is a very normal ratio. I can see. If, I if, see if what you you're saying. At, if you wanted to look at it cold and objectively, yeah. Well, isn't that what we're supposed to do? Look at things cold and objectively before we come up with a foreign policy or some sort of cultural movement to influence our foreign policy, number one. Number two, lost in the shuffle there is a very important point that Coleman Hughes made that I've been trying to make here on a regular basis, which is God, the Hamas does not distinguish between civilians and soldiers because the soldiers don't dress like soldiers. They dress like civilians. They live with civilians. They hide amongst the civilians. They embed themselves in civilians. All are violations of the Geneva Conventions when it comes to warfare, but only one side of this conflict is held up against those Geneva Conventions. Only one side of this conflict is constantly lectured to and reprimanded about their so-called violations of war crime statutes. Uh, Hamas, this entire conflict this entire war started with a violation of all conventions having to do with appropriate uh, warfare tactics when hamas slaughtered over a thousand civilians for enjoying a music festival joe biden yesterday was lecturing bibi netanyahu about waging a war there and imagine being bibi netanyahu being through the wars going all the way back to the yom kippur war in the 1972 war, literally fighting, taking a bullet and seeing his brother die. And you got to sit on the phone and tolerate Joe freaking Biden telling you how to fight a war. But he's giving pointers to Bibi about what he's supposed to be doing. Do you remember Joe Biden lecturing in any way the leader of Hamas about what they should and shouldn't do? Shocking. Maybe he should. Maybe he should try that. But he's too much of a coward. But th there's more here, though. It's great.
But well, I don't. It's I don't. Still, I hope it doesn't come across cold because. But it's mostly women and children that are dying. That are that are dying because they're in a place where these terrorists are. Right. I mean, this is. It's not because the terrorists on purpose embed themselves with the civilian population, right. which is a war crime. Right. Which is a strategy that they have clearly employed. When yeah. you see them, and when when the IDF went into that hospital and found uh, Hamas just and, recently. Yes. Yeah. So it's real. It's not just a conspiracy theory. We know that that's real. Um, but it's still, you're still talking about 20,000, whatever it is, of innocent people getting bombed into the Stone Age. And then there's this, like, what are the pressures that are being put on people that are trying to deliver aid? How difficult yeah. is it? So my understanding of the aid issue, uh, and I, I've looked into it quite a bit is that the aid is getting into Gaza. Uh, they've, they've gotten over a quarter ton of food into Gaza since the beginning of the war, which is pretty similar to the food that was getting in. The problem is it's not getting to the people, it's especially in the north, because the north is a war zone. So it's getting through the border. Israel's allowing it in. But then what happens is the IDF doesn't control the delivery. The delivery is controlled by humanitarian organizations like UNRWA and just other, a whole bevy of humanitarian organizations. And they have these aid convoys going to people, but then Hamas hijacks it, random gang of people, uh, Palestinians hijack it, hungry civilians hijack it. Uh, and it's an absolute mess in terms of distributing the aid. And that's why you see, and it was a problem in the war in Iraq too. What was... Just a real fast uh, uh, adjustment here on these numbers, um, because I think he, uh, Coleman Hughes misspoke there. It's not a quarter ton. It's actually tens of tons of of aid that have been sent in at this point. Um, some estimates put it over uh, 20 tons. Uh, Turkey sends 40,000 tons. I mean, I, we don't know. We, we can give you the full number. I just don't want anyone to be misled, but he he misspoke. Uh, about how many tons of aid have been brought in there. But we did see a video just yesterday, I think it was, or maybe it was Monday, of the um, of the uh, woman from Israel who was basically laying out the map. Oh, you know what? I didn't do it on the show. I did it on I did it on my radio show. Uh, basically, Israel has provided enough tons of food for Gaza right now to feed them for an entire year. Of course, the war's only gone on for six months, but they have Israel personally has delivered that much aid into the Gaza territories for a year. So there's plenty of food there. If it doesn't get to the people, it's because that's what Hamas wants, because they want the headlines. They literally want the headlines of starving children and women and mothers and the elderly because they know that that helps their political goals. Understand something. Hamas, Israel's enemy, and really the enemy of all free people on this planet, they are fine with their people dying if it means they get their political goal. And make no mistake, their political goal is the absolute abolition of the Israeli state. So we need to keep reminding ourselves of that as we discuss these issues. The case when it was being reported, it's very difficult to know when, you know, you're getting the Hamas version of a story and then you're getting the Israeli version of a story. What happened when there was the aid truck and, and people started getting shot? The one last night. No, it was a while ago. Oh, uh, okay. So yes, the, that 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 one that was a couple of weeks ago. That I don't I don't have the full detailed version up to date of what happened there, but I believe it was it had something to do with a, a clash between the IDF and other Palestinians that were involved in distributing the aid. Because what you have is you have Hamas, but you also have powerful families in Gaza that you could call them sort of criminal syndicates or whatever, but they're powerful, important families as well that are also taking the aid sometime. And these are the families that if if Israel is allowed and goes into Rafah and defeats Hamas, one of the possibilities is that they want to get these powerful Palestinian families to take over the Gaza Strip. And these people are also involved in, in, uh, in the distribution of aid or in the hoarding of aid or in the stealing of aid or in the uh, taking of aid and then selling it for very high prices on the secondary market, which is why it may not be getting to everyone in the North. So but it's, are those it's not the because... people that the Israeli soldiers shot? No, I think it, it, I think it turned into, a, it could have been a panic firefight and they killed, they killed civilians. What caused the panic firefight? I don't, I don't think there's details.
That I don't know. So the that accusation one I don't was that they were shooting people that were trying yes. to get aid. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, but what we saw on the drone footage of that attack, I'm sure you saw it too, is that there were no IDF soldiers on the ground. The trucks came in. Hamas was trying to take it all. The people were swarming the trucks trying to get the food, and Hamas started shooting people. What caused the panic attack? People were starving because Hamas has kept food from their people and hoarded all of the supplies for themselves. That's on a regular basis, you'll see video footage of the aid trucks going into Gaza and they're boarded by Hamas terrorists with guns who are keeping everybody away from the trucks. Because they're evil. And you don't think that's tr the case? I, I think it's very unlikely. Is it possible? Yeah, it's possible. Absolutely. There, there My is... assumption is that there is going to be war crimes in this right. war. Right. Because, and I know Kurt would probably say I'm, I'm, I'm doing the tragedy of war thing. But it's actually a legitimate point in every single war, even the just ones. There are war crimes by berserk soldiers, by the good guys. Yeah. That doesn't mean it's genocide. And that doesn't mean it's not a just war. That That is a very important point, the war crimes thing. Because I think when you're asking someone to follow and obey rules, when you're also asking them to murder people that they don't even know, and that these are the bad people, like you have it in your head that those are the people that you have to kill and you're getting shot at and you're watching your friends die and you're, you know, two years into this now, whatever it is, you know, when you're in Ukraine, for instance, mm -hmm. you know, you're two years into getting shot at and like, I'm sure they do some horrific shit if they catch people or if they get someone that they think is on the other side or someone who looks like they're on the other side. It's you're, you're asking a person to do an insanely evil and horrific thing, but then stop when the rules don't apply. And some people are not going to do that. That's right. And I think that the fundamental difference between Israel and Hamas is Israeli society, however imperfectly, is not going to celebrate the monsters on their own side when they're really found to be monsters. That's they're not going to they're not going to hand out candies to people who kill Palestinian civilians like Hamas does um in, in reverse and so my feeling about it is still that you know any nation that suffered what israel did on october 7th everyone in the country would be saying you have to go get these guys you have to eliminate this organization that did this and if they're and they're 80 percent finished with that job it would make no sense at this point to stop before you've cut out the last 20 percent of the cancer or before you've put out the last 20 percent of the fire Right. E even with all of the absolute suffering that is real on the Palestinian side, you know, so that that's how I feel about it. And I, I think it's really it's very, very distinct from genocide, because genocide is when you're trying to maximize civilian casualties. I think Israel, however, imperfectly is doing the opposite. They're trying to minimize civilian casualties. That's interesting. Um, what would people say? that would um, disagree with you when they talk about targeting mosques, targeting hospitals. And we know that some of the targeting hospital stories are just not true. Like the New York Times printed a story. Saying so this goes on, and I suggest you watch it as well. Go check out Joe Rogan's channel. Let's face it, Joe Rogan conversations go on for hours. But you see what Joe Rogan did there is that that's interesting. That's a good point. That's interesting. And then finally, he's left with the the pivot interview option, which is, well, what would the people who disagree with you say? And he raised the bombing of hospitals and said, but of course, we know that most of the hospital bombings, no, all of the hospital bombings were not what we were told they were when they started. And oh, by the way, Hamas hides in the hospitals. And we know that to be an absolute fact right now. So on and on and on, you see that what started as Joe Rogan suggesting that Israel is on the brink of genocide of the Palestinian people in Gaza and are just as guilty as Hamas Confronted with facts in a reasonable and logical way, Joe Rogan sort of went on a little seven or eight minute journey there and said, yeah, OK, those are all really good points. Yeah. Right. And that's what we have to do. And stop listening to all the people screaming on either side of any issue about how uh, the other side is just evil incarnate and all those other things. If, if you've got somebody in front of you who disagrees with you on something as fundamental as this, you just sit down and reasonably talk through the facts. And it's kind of impossible to disagree, ultimately.